those presentation is about the way uh, the pilgrimage way from England to uh, Rome called the uh, Via Francigena. It's a very old pilgrim way, but it sort of had a sort of revival recently. Uh, the Camino de Santiago, the revival of the Camino was in the 80s. The Via Francigena is really in the 2000s, okay? So the Via Francigena is a little bit more adventurous than the Camino in the sense that you don't have all those people that you will meet, all the buzz that you will have on the Via Francigena that you have on the Camino that you won't have really that in the Via Francigena. The most popular in Italy in the beautiful region of Tuscany is maybe the most popular. You've got about 150 kilometers of walks on the Via Francigena really beautiful and that's where you're gonna meet the most people but it's not like the Camino where you bump on people every few kilometers and you get crack and you know uh, have little cafes everywhere and you know the Via Francigena is very well marked very safe not a problem but uh, you won't meet as many people as you would do on the Camino de Santiago so uh, this is the menu del Pellegrino, okay? So this is a very of uh, our <laughs> talk tonight. Uh, introducing, I just want to introduce you to the company and who I am. Uh, give you a short history. I'm not an, histor an historian, so you know, you go on Wikipedia if you want more information or your local library. Just give you another view of that. Uh, the way, the different, the, the way that, I'm going to introduce you the main way, the way of Sigeric. Uh, the Bishop of Canterbury that walked uh, in the 10th century to uh, Rome. It's the main way I'm going to introduce. I'm going to do in the next few months presentation on other ways. For example, we will introduce the uh, Francigena of the South going to Jerusalem and we'll, we'll do a talk about it in the future. And it's also one from Florence called the San Francis Way going through Assisi. But I'm focusing on the main Via Francigena, uh, the well-known. Uh, then the testimonium, if you, uh, who's done the Camino before, Camino de Santiago, oh, okay, well, okay, very good, well done, guys. Uh, so the same for the Via Francigena, you can get a certificate, and it's called the testimonium, and it's written in Latin, and you get it from the Vatican, I'll explain you that. Uh, the terrain, very complicated for me, the number five and the number six, because terrain on 2,000 kilometers is a little bit difficult to explain, but... I'll, I'll give you a little overview of that, the weather as well, when to go. Huh? Uh, accommodation, a little how to get there from Dublin, and then the highlights of the way through a slideshow of pictures to give you a little idea of uh, if you have only one week or 10 days, what you can focus on depending on your uh, of what you like. And then question and answer. I hope to go through that in about half an hour, 30 minutes, and then we can do 15, 12, 15 minutes if you want, or whatever we need, less or more of question. If you have any, I'll have Rosa or some of the guys coming beside me. If there is any gear questions, we'll, we'll get some help. And I'm always happy to stay after, you know, when I'm packing. So if you have any questions that are really specific to you, we can always talk about that after. So we are a small company based in the city center of Dublin, Dublin 2, in Ogier Street. Uh, that's the tourism island building. And um, we are just above the pharmacy O'Hara's at the crossroad between St. Francis Street and Camden Street, Ogier Street, the sort of crossroad there. Uh, we are more known under Camino Ways because, you know, I've been organizing tour on the Camino since 2006. We launched Francigena Ways as a brand only this year, but Camino Ways has been selling the Via Francigena for the past three years. We just thought that would be good marketing wise to take the brand and separate the two products into two separate websites, micro website and entity. We also are about to sell trips in Ireland, just walking and cycling trips, specific one under a brand called CaminoIreland.com. Uh, and uh, Rustic Rumble is some other walking holiday in the Alps or in the Pyrenees, but uh, our main business is really the Camino and the Via Francigena. And uh, we're really proud to do everything ourselves, book hotel, luggage transfer, choose you know the, the, the nice uh, place to stay, give you advice. Clients are generally quite happy. And if you don't trust me, you can go to um, TripAdvisor, you know, anyway, 
can't lie on TripAdvisor. You can't, you know, you can't choose whatever review. So some of the reviews are good, some are less good, but it's just for you to read. It's quite interesting to read about us. And then after we are at TAA affiliates and all, the, all other uh, things. So the Via Francigena is uh, the itinerary basically of the people of the north of Europe going to Rome. Uh, it's been, this route has been taken, uh, you know, it's recorded since uh, uh, the 8th, uh, the 7th, 8th century. It's been known by, under many names, Via Romea, uh, La Voie de Rome, uh, uh, the Frankish Way, uh, the Lombard Way, whatever, it's plenty of different names. There was not a single route. Why? Because every pilgrim starts from his own dawn step, so different routes lead to the same place. Or, you know, all the route uh, uh, leads to Rome. Uh, the one that is known at Via Francigena today is the way of Sigeric, Bishop of Canterbury, in, ten, in the 10th century, 997, I think, 997. He walked to Rome to get his pallium from the Pope and, uh, you know, to be official uh, bishop uh, of, uh, you know, uh, oh, in, uh, in, uh, in England of... Uh, Canterbury. So he walked and the Via Francigena is, is he, he recorded it in a book, you know, his trip and the Via Francigena is his trip to uh, Rome. So he took notes, so we, we follow his itinerary. Um, it goes through England. You've got only two days in England but it's beautiful Kent. It's really superb. You've got the north of France and you've got, you know, the Alps, Switzerland, and you've got all across Italy and different <laughs> beautiful parts of Italy. Italy is, of course, the most popular part of the Via Francigena. That's where, you know, 80% of the travelers do it, really Italy, Tuscany, or Lazio, the last 100 kilometers. And, um, of course, it's the pilgrimage to the Holy See, to the tomb of St. Peter of St. Paul, and, I mean, the Via Francigena finish in Rome and what a city, you know, you can really, you know, lose yourself in the city for a few days. It's just the most amazing place to be, you know. So this is your itinerary of the Via Francigena, starting in Cantorbury, the old spelling, if you don't mind, uh, uh, through, through Kent. And um, so basically there is two days in Kent, one day where uh, for our company, we don't organize um, a walk on the day where you take the ferry. You've got a couple of hours of ferry. You take your luggage with you. You take the ferry and you uh, you go to Calais. And then after this one day where you follow the beautiful coast, you know, the, the cliff on the French side to Wisson. We have the Cap Grand Blanc, Cap Grenet. It's really superb. Uh, on the north there, you've got a couple of uh, battlefield of the World War One cemeteries and uh, monuments etc it's interesting no big landmark if you want it's not like there is plenty of place to do wow you know a couple of nice city like arras and then you've got Reims and the champagne region it's really pretty uh, the city of Reims is really superb as well there's no big landmark as it's a pleasant walk then you go through the center of france it's, the north of france is relatively flat anyway and then you come to besançon the pre-alps you get the Alps in Switzerland, and then becomes to be more challenging. Uh, you've got a, a pass, a mountain pass at 2,500 meters. You need to be a good hiker for that uh, when you go there. And then you have the Valley of Haustart, really superb on the Italian side this time. And then you've got the north of Italy, and then beautiful Tuscany, absolutely amazing. And of course, Rome and La Lazio before, before that. Um, it's quite well marked with the, in the city it's mar it's well marked outside of the city it's marked well as well some part in France a little bit scattered a little bit difficult to navigate but there's been a lot of investment from the Council of Europe sort of body of uh, you know EU that spend money on cultural route and heritage so there is like the route of Mozart and the Camino de Santiago is one of them and there is the route of the, the um, 
the Vikings, etc. You know, so the Via Francigena is one of the routes that is sponsored by the Council of Europe. So they spend a lot of money for the signposting to open nice uh, ways and trails. And this is some of the uh, sign that you will find on route. Um, generally, the signposting is in white and red. So the two bands like this one, the, right, the, 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 the white and red, white and red there. Uh, it's quite easy to follow, but there's a couple of good books. Uh, I give you the reference after that you can buy that gives you direction, turn left, turn right, with a map, etc. Uh, like the Camino, you've got people en route, so you can ask. It's not like you're in the middle of the desert in Morocco and you know, you've got to look at the sun to know where is the north and the south. <laughs> you are people around you, okay? The testimonium is, works the same way as the Compostela certificate coupled with the pilgrim passport. Um, we, we have our own passport that we give to our client, but if you do it independently, uh, there's several associations that will uh, get membership or sell it to you, and, or if you are a member, they will, they will give the passport to you. Uh, there is the, the European Association of the Pilgrim of the Via Francigena. Uh, there is the international one of the Via Francigena, and they all have pa official, their own official passport, if you want. So uh, you can apply to them to get your own passport. But effectively, you just need stamp, and one stamp a day is enough. So even if you lose your passport and you start stamping your, your book, as long as you can prove that you sort of have done the way you're entitled to your certificate. So this is the certificate that is given to you in uh, Roma. You can get the, this certificate, the testimonium, in two places. One in the Vatican, directly by the office of uh, a bishop that I don't remember the name. You go to his office and you have to do 140 kilometers. So the place is called Aqua Pendente uh, and you need to do 140 kilometers to get this from the office of the bishop in the Vatican. Um, or you have to do 280 kilometers starting in Luca uh, cycling. Now, if you, don't have to, if you don't have nine days and you want to certificate, you can always start in Viterbo, that's one week, 100K, 120 roughly, like Saria on the Camino de Santiago. And you go to Opera Romana, which is the official travel agent of the Vatican, and they will give it to you, uh, what, you know, for 100 kilometers, they absolutely find they're not so strict on the number of kilometers. And it's exactly the same, it's just not the same person that have signed it, really, that have given it to you. In terms of terrain, um, it's a little bit difficult to describe about 2,000 kilometers, but generally consider, you know, the north, north of France uh, relatively flat and easy. So you will be able to do longer distances, about 20, 25, maybe 30 kilometers a day. If you're a good walker, you may want to do more. It's your choice on the north of France. Uh, south of France, you start to see the Pyrenees, the, the Alps, sorry about that. Uh, so a little bit more ascent, maybe about like the Wicklow Mountains, you know, 400, 500 meter ascent every day. Uh, then the Alps, you have some days where you can do a thousand, ascent, a thousand meter ascent per day as well. But in Switzerland, you have, to, you have a lot of option to split and make days shorter as well. So if the day is a little bit too difficult for you, you can split it with, instead of doing, you know, 15K, you may be able to do 9, 10, 11K, depending on, on what you find en route. There's some really good guidebook. You can really do it yourself and see your way. We offer an itinerary that generally is adapted to the ascent and the descent as well. But now Switzerland is really superb, really good trails, but it is difficult. And then after you have, after the Alps, you've got really terrain that is, uh, you know, quite hilly, but not super difficult. But like the example of this picture, this is um, uh, Tuscany and um, still a little bit up and down and got really great views and 
got the village to stop en route as well. So, um, well, uh, yeah. And um, well, this is a picture of the San Bernard Pass, sir, 2,500 meters. And uh, well, it's it's really superb. It's one of the three most important uh, uh, monastery of the medieval age, uh, with the Saint Port and the third one I. I forgot which one it is, but San Bernard is one of the three most important. There used to be a Roman camp, be Roman camp uh, before that. There used to be Roman camp as well, where they were placed, and then the monastery was uh, very close to that. A uh, very important passage as well for the army or during invasions, etc. Really strategical as well. Well, in terms of weather. Uh, what you want is to the most popular is generally from april may june and september october okay and uh, now if you go in switzerland you can probably do july august if you because you're high in the mountain it's not too hot anyway it's not too cold but if you do switzerland you probably don't want to go you cannot go before june anyway because it's going to be blocked by snow at 2500 meter and you can't go after mid-September. So you're restricted in Switzerland on the high pass between mid-June and mid-September kind of. You know, summer is good there. But in Italy, um, especially around, you know, Milan, Torino, <coughs> you probably don't want to walk in July, August because it's about 40, 40 degrees or more, you know? So in those places, you're probably happy with uh, May, you know, April, May, June, and. September, or October. Uh, same in France. So the north of France should be okay year-round. Okay, should be okay year-round. Winter is pretty cold, but I don't think you should be blocked anytime. Um, and the north of France, even in July, August, you know, on the coast, should be pretty okay. Uh, inland, always, you know, the climate, continental climate, is always harsher, you know, colder and. Are warmer in, in summer so you you choose your time now in terms of accommodation or routes um, now you will find hotel on, on those 2000 kilometers you will find a mix of hotel B&B's farm stay accommodation uh, use hostel uh, it's possible to to find everything but yesterday I had a question in Cork a person tell me yes can I take a kick what is the budget of a night well it's difficult to answer because you will not find a, 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 a pilgrim refuge every night so maybe you will have to do a budget where either you take your tent and you know if you find nothing on your budget you just camp uh, but it's going to be difficult to find a pilgrim refuge at 10 euro every night like for the Camino de Santiago okay so sometime you will probably have to take a, a B&B or another night you will have to take an hotel and then uh, there is also especially you know in France and it's developing more and more in Italy uh, the churches are opening places with two three four beds uh, they ask for a donation sometimes no donation at all uh, so you 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 can get by, but you can't be promised of uh, or spending ten euro a night. It's not possible. Now, if you look into better accommodation, I it's possible to have your bathroom en suite every night on two thousand kilometers. Absolutely, because that's what we do. We got nice hotel, but nice hotel. I would say nice accommodation because we can't promise an hotel. Sometimes it's a and B. Sometimes it's a farm stay, sometimes it's an hotel, sometimes it's a three star, sometimes there's also five star ground lux available. Uh, but it's difficult to have consistency, especially because the Via Francigena is so new. And especially in France, they don't know. Uh, they they sometimes have not heard about the Via Francigena at all. So it's sort of new coming in some place. In Italy, um, they, they know what you do. Uh, for sure. So it's a mix uh, of accommodation. And the book, uh, so there's two books um, with name of accommodation. One is called, it's the 
book of Paul Chin is an Englishman living in south of France, C H I N N, and Paul has really the reference uh, for the for the French Jena. His book is very technical: turn left, turn right, how to follow it, how not to get lost. It's really precise, really good map, really good directions. It's really good, and he sells a companion, which is a bit more sort of spiritual. How you know how to you know follow the way, a bit cultural, spiritual in his companion beside that. And the Cicerone has also two guide books to cover the way. The Cicerone is, is very good. There's a bit more mix on uh, general cultural, historical information. But the Cicerone is less precise on, on the direction. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a good option as well. I mean, uh, we had a couple of clients and they were happy to travel with both of them and they say, well, they are very, you know, they complement each other anyway, so. How do you spell the supplement? S the Cicerone, C-I-C-E-R-O-N-E, C-I-C-E-R-O-N-E, Cicerone. It's a well-known uh, English uh, brand or uh, they, they have a couple of other books of Cicerone upstairs. I don't think they have the Via Francigena. Uh, but uh, it's good and uh, the Cicerone is much cheaper than the Polchin but when you do a journey like that you want also to have some good information so you know four or five euro won't make a difference so much on your journey so come arrivare <laughs> I'm French I don't speak Italian so it doesn't matter uh, uh, how to get there uh, <laughs> from London you've got millions of airports there so that's your best option for Canterbury, uh, probably depends where you are, probably about an hour and a half, two hours from uh, Canterbury to the start of your, of your walk. Uh, from Dublin, we were quite lucky because with Ryanair and Aer Lingus, the two of them really offer us top service really in terms of where to, to, to fly, it's pretty good. Uh, we've got uh, Beauvais with Ryanair, we've got Paris uh, with uh, Aer Lingus, and of course you've got Air France, etc. You've got Lyon, uh, you've got Grenoble uh, airports, and there is uh, Geneva, Zurich airport. Uh, in the north of Italy, you have Milan, Bologna, and you've got Rome. So pretty much any of these airports will get you about two hours, it's probably two hours from any start or finish of your walk, so you, you probably be good. No, the, or the Sliss Pisa as well. So, gonna give you a couple of highlights of the way. And, and so, it's difficult to choose. If you, if you have 85 days, <laughs> uh, you probably can't do everything. Three, three, three days. Uh, if you don't have 85 days, you can do it in section. For example, lovely section, start in Canterbury, finish in Arras, that's about two weeks. Or you can finish in Visc, which is about a week, it's the first section there. Um, really, the, one of the highlights is really Kent, you know, the Garden of England, it's really, really beautiful. The city of Canterbury, medieval city, the cathedral, it's really nice. Um, uh, the north of France is really, really pretty as well. The coast, well, the city, the cities are not always, excuse me, drop that. Uh, the cities are not always pretty. Like for example, Calais has been completely destroyed during the war. But the countryside beside Calais, the first day to walk uh, is along the, the coast on the, on the cliff, you know, the white cliff uh, responding to Dover really. So it's really pretty walk. And then the countryside on the Latin is really green and nice. Uh, so I'd say that's I like. Um, after, if you have an interest for history and for the World War I, it's a couple of uh, cemeteries and uh, uh, places uh, to visit. No big highlights. It's a nice troll, but nothing particular to see. It's just nice countryside over there on the north of France. And then, soon after uh, you arrive in the Champagne region. So the countryside changed completely and Champagne is really lovely and those wine, the wine region is really nice. The accommodation step 
uh, up again in Champagne. A lot of foreigners, uh, you know, Irish, uh, English, American, Canadian go there to eat good and drink well as well. So accommodation are expensive, but they have a really higher standard as well. Often the dinner is always with an aperitif of a glass of champagne and sometimes you will dine with champagne. It's just uh, uh, the standard in Champagne is uh, Champagne region is lovely to walk, but it's also very good accommodation over there. And then center of France is a little bit uh, flat, a little bit uh, boring, I'd say, uh, but you arrive soon in Besançon. It's uh, the get, it's an old Roman city as well. So it's a lot of heritage to see and visit in Besançon and it opens to the Alps. So it starts to get to be undulating again uh, and you have the Alps <coughs> behind. So it's really beautiful to start in Besançon and maybe finish in, but very pretty. It's also the place where, uh, you know, great cheese, you know, when I'm French, I love cheese. And also when you cross into Switzerland, it's where, uh, not far from Valley du Joux, where they make the watches. So there is something to, to learn about as well and you arrive in Switzerland Switzerland is clean organized works like a clock it's just perfect you know it's very boring for young people but it's uh, for it's lovely lovely country lovely lakes and the mountain and the Alps on the background uh, you know super expensive I mean it's really really expensive Switzerland it's not a joke it's really true I mean, I know just Sweden from a few years ago and got a, a shock, you know, and even when I booked the hotel for the client, I'm just like, oh, it's, it's really, really expensive. Uh, but you got the service as well, and it's a different culture. The people are a bit mad in Sweden, so it's kind of nice as well to be out of, sort of, you know, to speak generally well English as well. It's easy to communicate with them. And, um, Lausanne and Vevey, it's, you know, so we have three main towns, three main cities uh, in Switzerland, it's Yverdon, uh, Lausanne and Vevey are probably, you know, it's the Gold Coast really of, of Switzerland, lovely city, beautiful people, big cars and, you know, mountain on the background, it's a couple of UNESCO World Heritage sites as well, uh, in close to the, the Chateau de, de Chillon, which is just on the Lausanne Lake. So we've got about two days walk along the lake of Lausanne. And then we enter straight into the mountain. Like there it starts to be a bit more difficult. It's more challenging. So for people that like to, to do hiking and that have an interest for more, you know, difficult, more adventure, difficult kind of mountain walk. And you go to the pass. I show you the picture of the, the, the Saint Bernard Pass at 2,500 meter. It's real achievement. Uh, to do it, I think. And you, another highlight would is also the Aosta Valley. It's the green valley on the other side of the pass, but on the Italian side. So, you know, and the mountains are also different than Switzerland uh, when you are in the Italian side. And Aosta, the city of Aosta, is a, an old Roman garrison uh, town. There's a lot to see as well. Uh, really nice trolls over there and um, I skip a little bit the north of Italy because it's a bit flat and there's not so much to see the cities in Italy are amazing though every night you will have a nice place to visit after your walk for well, the valley of the Po in the north there's nothing much to say it's just it's a nice troll and you've got this 150 kilometers through Tuscany, San Gimignano, Monte Regioni, Colle di Val d'Elsa, Siena, Luca, amazing town, amazing place to walk, L very, very scenic, L amazing food, truffles, you know, uh, cheese, olive oil, very simple food. Uh, you know, it's not like, well, I, I love the, the food from France, you know, I'm from there, but my mom cooks with soaps and it's complicated and it's beautiful and it's good, but Italian food is, uh, you know, very light in the opposition. It's, it's like simple ingredient, really well done. And that's a meal for vegetarian. We've always have price from our clients when they come back from Italy. It's just, oh, it's amazing. I'm vegetarian, I, I eat a lot of plenty of different varied thing, you know, where 
you can't always say that from other country like you know sometimes the camino for vegetarian like okay i got a salad i got a, they give me tuna they said it was for vegetarian you know <laughs> but anyway sometimes it's a little bit difficult but in italy i think it's probably the best country for for any sort of uh, and um the last 100 kilometers is also another highlight. After Tuscany, you have uh, Lazio. Uh, it's fairly underrated because it's Rome and uh, has a reputation to be not very clean, etc. Well, it's true, it's not the cleanest in the world. Huh? Uh, the Roman people are not the cleanest, but it is, it is actually very nice. The town that you cross, uh, uh, Monte Fiascone, Viterbo, the landscape is uh, um, hilly and pretty. Um, the towns are also nice. Um, the food is excellent. Uh, it's the second most popular trip we have because there is the finish in Rome, and finishing in Rome is uh, really special. I think you know it's probably the most beautiful city in the world. You can find anything you want in Rome. You know if you're interested in you know very 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 old stuff or you know, modern art or, you know, food or just going out in Rome is just amazing, you know, there's a lot to see, a lot to do. And um, you get your certificate when you arrive in Rome, so it gives you a, uh, a little <coughs> thing more. So it's um, sort of short overview of the way uh, that that's what I want to bring to you. Uh, tonight, so um, I, if you have some question, I'll be happy to answer them. And um, yeah, so anything? Yes. Yeah, well, in Italy, yeah, it, it, it is like the Camino de Santiago. It's a mix of trails, of footpaths and roads and, um, and dirt track. Uh, it's a mix of everything. You, you, you cross an entire country. It's not like you do a trek, you know, on a very specific part of Italy, Sweden or France. You're just going to take a road. So you take a way across the country. So it's a mix of that. The l local town and council have uh, tried to avoid roads and give you good footpaths, but it's not always the case. Sometimes, yeah, it's a little bit busy. I know, um, in, in, for example, in Lazio, there's one part where there's one kilometer walking on the side of the national road. Mm -hmm. So it's not always easy to avoid it but it's generally quite good it's just sometimes yeah it's, it's not perfect the problem with those itineraries is uh they've been marked by people but generally it's you know it's been it's a bit politic as well where the way is going by you know so it's not always very coherent in terms of the walking if it was uh, really the people that love the walking that make the trace that would have been different you know but generally so, so but you also need to have accommodation where you stay so there are practical paths like the Camino de Santiago maybe it's not where uh, you know Sigeric exactly walk but at least you've got somewhere to stay mm -hmm. for the night and where you can find water etc speaking about water and food you have to carry your food and your water during the day you can't be sure you will find something every day everywhere to have uh, so you've got to carry about two, two liter of water. You will be able to refill at one point during the day. But it's not like the Camino where every hour you can refill your bottle, you can buy a sandwich and you can stop for a drink. It's not the same, you know. You will find something in between, but you have to take a sandwich with you on the morning and you have to take two liter of water just to make sure, you know. Yeah. Jeet. Uh, yeah, like you mean dormitories? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you did from where to where? Uh, from to Toulouse, okay. okay. Oh, you did some parts, so you did the Arl way. Yeah. But you started in Toulouse, yeah? yeah? 
Yeah, well, yes, yes. No, not, no, and the, 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 it's very difficult. But even uh, from Toulouse to Sampor, maybe not every night you were able to find it. Did you? Well, this is it. 40 or 50, you will be able to find always a very cheap accommodation. Okay, yes. But this is the problem of the Via Francigena, is that every 20K, you will find something to stay for sure. And you will be able to find a room with a bathroom for sure. But if you look for cheap accommodation, you will have to juggle between or take your times, that's what I said before, and then you're sure to have a cheap accommodation. <laughs> if you are, no, but you know, on, on, on a budget, uh, you, if you're really on a budget, you, you, but you have to sort of allow to have a B&B &B sometime, 40 euro a room sometime, you know, because it's gonna be really difficult to find a gîte, uh, 10, 15 euro every night for 2,000 kilometers. But it's part of the adventure as well, you know, so. Well, uh, well, <laughs> I, I mean, you, I, I, you know, I mean, you have to be reasonable about it, you know. I think you, you see. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can put the tent. Sometimes there's camping, you know. Maybe they tell you to move your tent, you know. Maybe they don't. <laughs> But you know, when you have the time, the good thing is that uh, if you take your bike, you can always cover a little bit more and find a place that's more suitable. There's always a place where you can put the tent somewhere. And it's not fun. Yes? But you say Switzerland is very expensive. Yeah. Typically, how many days, how many nights would you spend in Switzerland? In Switzerland? Yeah. Well, it's about, uh, it's about 15 days to cross the entire Switzerland. But the most pretty, really, uh, it's from Lausanne to Aosta. We have a nine days trip from Lausanne to Aosta. You've got two days to finish in Aosta, but Lausanne along the lake and then going into the heart of the Alps is really the highlight. It's superb there, yeah. And then in Aosta, why? Because you have the big city, so it's easy to take a bus to take a, a, an airplane from Milan, for example. You know what I mean? If you stop in the College du Grand Saint Bernard, you have to take a first bus, a second bus for the change, and a third bus, and you know what I mean? In Aosta, you're sure to be back home the same day you finish, you know? Not the same day, but the next day after breakfast, you're, you're home, you know? Mm -hmm. The uh, Pass of St. Bernard? Yeah. Uh, is that the highest? 2,500, that's the highest you, you go? Yeah, but the uh, Saint Bernard Pass is the highest on the Via Francigena. Yeah. Now, if you take a second night and sleep there, I'm sure you can explore around, but it's yeah. the highest on the on way. The, on the way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the highest on the way. Yeah, the other side, the other mountain is that you go through is the Jura mountain, and they're a bit lower, about 1,000, 1,200 meters. So that's what you have before Yverdon, but that's not too complicated. And they are roundish mountain, it's like, walking in the Wicklow Mountains, it's not mm -hmm. super complicated, but it's really pretty. Mm. Yes. How does the Italian section compare with the St. Francis Way? The Italian section to the St. Francis Way? Oh, yeah. Well, the St. Francis Way is even newer. It's the Via Francigena to Rome. It's even newer than the Via Francigena. So it's been recently marked. Accommodation is a bit more difficult again. Uh, but the San Francisco way is more difficult because you are going through the central mountain of Italy, the Pennine mountain. So the San Francisco way, the one from Florence, San Sepulcro, Assisi, Rieti, and Rome. This one we offer it as well, but it is it is challenging. This one you've got a lot of hiking up and down every day. It's superb, and you've got Gubbio, you've got some amazing cities and, and, and little villages, but it's a difficult hike. It's a difficult one. You have to be ready to do 20, 22 kilometers with good ascent and good descent every day, you know. So, well, it's the really rewarding one, the San Francisco way. But I'll do a presentation on that next year, on the beginning of the year, on the San Francisco. Yes, anybody else? No? Okay. Um, so, okay. where can you buy the Paul Chin book from? I think that's that book. Uh, Polchin. Uh, yeah, Polchin has a website and you can buy it online on his guidebook. It's about 20 or 25 euro, I think, with shipping. Uh, you can buy it online directly. He's got three volumes. One is uh, from Canterbury to Besançon, Besançon to Vercelli, and Vercelli to Rome. So you buy the section you want. But they are good quality. And he did uh, new releases about like 
um, six months ago, so it's well updated and well documented. He's got his email as well, you can contact him, he's, he's responding quite well. Are they each 20, 25 euro? Or yeah, the books, yeah. Each 20, 25 euro, each of the books. Each. Absolutely. You can also buy the, the PDF version of it as well for cheaper, but you have 200 pages to print, good luck, you know. <laughs> Yes. If you just wanted to do the last 100 or 150 kilometers yeah. of the, the way, how would you go about it? Would you fly into Rome and take a bus up or would you yeah, fly absolutely. into somewhere else? What would, you do? what would you recommend? If you want to do the Agua Pendente there, because it's where you can get the certificate from the bishop uh, at the Vatican, mm -hmm. uh, you fly to Rome and then you take your, you take your bus, uh, you take your train directly to Agua Pendente. So. And this Aqua, like the water, so A C Q E A, pendente P E N T N T S. Okay. A long time I stopped school, you know. <laughs> Spelling. Never been good, even in French. Terrible. Yeah, so no, no, Rome is really good. Like, you know, in Italy, in France, and Switzerland, you have no problem with uh, public transport, train and bus, etc. They are amazing. They are amazing. Even, you know, if you were starting in Siena, mm -hmm. okay, uh, to go to Siena, there's a direct train there. It's an hour, an hour maybe an hour 45 because it's no, fa it's no fast train, but Florence, that is about there, close to Luca, um, Florence is an hour 45 by fast train, you know, and then you have 20 minutes to get to, uh, half an hour to get to Luca. So I in two hours, two hours and a half, from Rome, you can join there. But you have also, don't forget, uh, Pisa as well from Dublin, and it's only 20 minutes from Luca by by train. You know, so you've got many options. You've got Bologna as well with Ryanair. Mm. Uh, you, you got it, and also Bologna and Salangus as well. So uh, there's a lot of options for you there. And, um, the the train website in Italy, in France. And in Switzerland, I will have an English version as well, so it's easy to sort of see your price timetables, etc. Is your office in town a drop-in center, or do you yep. mostly take telephone calls? Both, yeah, well, uh, we, we are an online company, an but we are based on uh, in, in the city center. We have a nice uh, sofa and area. <laughs> We've got a nice cap. Uh, we have uh, this, um, you know, George Clooney. Uh, yeah. Coffee machine there. Not just Clini, but the coffee machine that goes with him. You know? So you get popping, you know. No problem. It's open nine to nine to five. Every day, not Sunday, but on every day, Saturday as well. So feel free to pop in if you want to talk with us. Okay, okay. Finish? Okay? Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>